Please welcome my guest for Sea Tales, Judge Albert T. Blanford of the United States Power Squadron. It's nice having you on the show, sir. Very nice to be here, Mark. Uh, I understand that you, over your years of experience, I'm sure you have dozens and dozens of good sea tales to tell with true stories with a safety message. Could you just tell us one or two? Yes, uh, the one story that really uh, comes to mind uh, is a story that happened about 15 years ago. I had a very good friend by the name of Phil who uh, I played golf with, we worked together, and he decided to buy a small sailboat, a small 20-foot uh, day sailor, and he didn't know the first thing about sailing, and he enlisted a friend of ours uh, by the name of Doug, who had some experience, how much I don't really know. But in any event, uh, they took off uh, here from Channel Islands Harbor about 15 years ago, and uh, for a cruise over to Anacapa back that, that day, they had no radio board. They started out uh, with a third person aboard, uh, uh, and uh, as the trip progressed and they got out on the middle of the channel, the wind started coming up as it frequently does around here. And uh, after they were a little over halfway across, the uh, metal mass broke. Mm. And so they're, first of all, faced with a problem of getting, trying to get things in order. And uh, all they had was a, uh, an outboard motor. And they made the first decision which was to continue on over to Anacapa rather than to return here to the harbor. Uh, why they made that decision, I don't really know. I talked to Doug, who, by the way, was the sole survivor of the three afterwards, a few days after, and I, I really, he wasn't really sure uh, why they made that decision, or at least I wasn't sure after talking to him. It, it was probably because of the sea conditions and the wind. I assume it was an east wind at that time. Uh, and. Maybe they made the right decision, I don't know. But in any event, they decided to go on over to Anacapa Island. And by this time, the winds were, I'm sure, uh, in excess of 30 miles. They were, they were, it was a full gale, uh, probably, by this mm -hmm. time. They arrived in the uh, area of Frenchies on this side of uh, uh, the island. And uh, again, they made another decision, that is to anchor on the north side of the island rather than go around to the other side where if uh, in an east wind there's a better anchorage over there. But again, why the decision was made or so forth, I, I don't know. But anyway, they, they did make the decision to anchor on that side. And uh, as they're uh, sitting there at anchor, uh, preparing to, I guess, to get something to eat, the anchor started dragging. Mm. They were unable to uh, keep the uh, boat from being bashed up against the uh, cliff there on Anacapa Island. The boat began breaking apart. All three of them were thrown into the water. They did have life jackets. That's incredible that yeah. this could go on unchecked. In other words, I always tell people it's a good idea to always have someone on watch. You know, a lot of people want to sail around the world by themselves or with two people. If it's your first experience, which a lot of people do think, yeah, oh yes. you know, you should have ample well, people. Mark, I think part of the problem was the, the place they anchored was not a good anchorage. Mm -hmm especially for the strength of the winds at the right. time. I'm and they sure. may not have put out enough road or Probably line to get the proper scope, scope or so, angle. That, that's right. right. There wasn't enough uh, road out to the scope. Of, again, of those details, I don't know. I wasn't there. But in any event, it began dragging, and the boat ended up bashed against the rocks. It broke apart. They all got thrown in the water. And Doug was able to scramble aboard the, uh, on the cliff yeah. and uh, was unable to assist the other two. And uh, Hugh and, and, and Phil, my good friend, were swept away by the sea. And uh, Right there, almost near shore. Oh, yeah. They, and they, they just got they, swept out to sea and couldn't make it in. Yeah, and Doug was, as I say, had, uh, acquired a perch on the side of the cliff. And uh, he, uh, he was unable to reach them. Uh, he told me he tried to throw out. He took out his life jacket and threw mm -hmm. it. You know, I'll try to... Did they all have jackets they on? They all had jackets on, but of course the wind was blowing. And, and it just carried them off like a sail. It carried them off, that's right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's, I, it's and you just can't blame so Doug. He didn't want to jump back in yeah. that sea, and you can't Well, he probably be, wouldn't be here to tell yeah. the story. That's right. He wouldn't be here if yeah. he had done that. So but people do have to use the, discretion. The thing is, uh, there's several, several morals you can, you can draw from this. The first is, never go out there without a marine radio. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if perhaps you, a handheld radio. 
for emergencies. Yes, uh, any kind of a marine radio where if you get in a situation where it's beyond your control, you hopefully can reach the Coast Guard and, and get some assistance. Uh, probably if they were able to radio the Coast Guard when their mast first uh, mm -hmm. broke, uh, they might have gotten assistance. Right. And, and they'd that's all be that's alive another today. thing. Contact the Coast Guard before it becomes yeah. an emergency. Yeah. A lot of people think it has to be a mayday. The other mm -hmm. thing is, uh, this channel can be very treacherous. You should never go out there if there's any indication of other than just good normal weather. We're recreational boaters. Uh, we're not professional seamen and uh, you, you just shouldn't do it. If there's any indication of bad weather, you should, uh, you should just not go out. The other thing uh, is that so many people buy boats, they don't really have any experience at the sea, out at sea. They don't know how dangerous it can be. And it's a very good idea to get some uh, instruction in the, uh, in the subject. Uh, uh, the Coast Guard Auxiliary, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, holds public classes, and the, and right. the, the power squadrons also have yeah. public boating courses. And we, we'll, be, we'll be going over that right on a few shows coming up here. This has been Captain's Log saying, be safe and watch Captain's Log. So thank you. And I